cord to the cloud. All right, well, welcome. This is Richard Roop with richardroop.com. And there's my alarm saying it's time for the ultimate training webinar for March, 2021. Let's go ahead and mute everybody out. And uh, <laughs> so on the line with me, I got uh, Coach Mark Hoffman. Let me go ahead and uh, share up, share it. Let's see, what can I share? I can share. And share Mark's bio. You see that, Mark? I do. That's a bad, <laughs> handsome guy. That handsome guy. So, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing great. Excited to be on the call tonight's call is going to be oh so good. You know, it's one of my favorite topics, sales. Uh, and so, I think it's just going to be perfect for tonight's clients. Uh, it's exactly what what everyone's needed right now. Yeah, yeah. We <clears throat> the magic words for converting leads into cash. We, uh, me and Dan Duran created a, uh, a, a webinar like this in 2004, okay? But over the years, we keep pointing people to that resource because it's just a great resource. And what I did is I, I found out it's in, let's take a look. There's, oh, there's a handsome guy. Um, <laughs> let's see. And I did uh, email people today uh, some documents that we are going to go over. Uh, if they're in Rapodia, let's see. Okay, yeah, it's in volume three of the uh, Marketing Mastery Training Systems. And there it is, Magic Words for lead, uh, for uh, Converting Leads into Cash. And this is a volume on power negotiation and sales strategies. You said you love sales. This is also, we covered how to leave the seller's house with a contract, how to handle objections with buyers and sellers. So that's just a great uh, volume of training calls. And tonight, we're going to go over pre-screening. This is a document from the 5x5 five five system on pre-screening and determining your exit. So we're not going to, we're going to focus on pre-screening, which is how do you best handle leads coming in on the phone? There's a lot of mistakes that I find people are doing and there's a lot of simple things that they should be doing, right, Mark? That we just we just need to train them. We just need to remind them and um, give them some of the best practices, right? Yeah, the simple stuff. Um, and hopefully you get a lot out of it. So next call. Okay, good. So we're going to go for about 45 minutes to an hour, and then we'll open up, do a little bit of Q&A. If you have any questions during the uh, webinar, go ahead and put them in the chat. Mark's going to be monitoring the chat. And, and I will then, do um, that for sure. And, and Richard, I'm not sure if you want to make me a co-host that might help I, me. <laughs> I always want to make you a co-host. The question that'll is, help, do I that'll do That'll help it? us. That'll help us. Cause then I can, you know, if there's like dogs, <laughs> dogs barking in the background or babies. No, I, I need you to remind me to do that. So let's see, make you, you are now a co-host. Thank you. All right. Okay. Let's see if Damien, Damien's not on the line. So you are helping me out. I appreciate that. And this is an area of your expertise. So you just chime in. I'll go ahead and do a kind of walk through the process and you just chime in anytime you want. Okay. okay. You got it. All right. Got All right. So everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started. This is the ultimate training webinar for March, 2010. We do these training webinars every month. Uh, the last couple months are actually available for free at rupodia.com forward slash free. Uh, they're there for now. We're going to pull those off, but it's uh, the one we did a mark on creating a million dollar postcard campaign. Walk through that. Yep. Then we did one on raising private money, how to raise all the private money you need. And uh, we walked through that. So now we, we, we put our heads together. What, what else would really make a difference for folks? Well, effectively handling the, the leads that they're spending money to generate, you know? So there's two, two things. You can call sellers or you can get sellers calling you, right? We're going to talk about how to handle the calls as they come in because it's two different approaches, okay? When you do what we call disruptive marketing, where you're actually going out and calling them, cold calling them, cold emailing, emailing them, uh, cold texting them, that's kind of a different process. And we're really good at that, but um, we like ideally them calling you it's a whole different psychology isn't it mark yep it's a different paradigm 
<laughs> well, as you mentioned today, uh, they're calling you. And so there's a different level of motivation there, uh, which was just insightful as you mentioned that. Right. Okay. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Um, I have this five by five. So the five by five system, the uh, five by five real estate profit system is kind of advanced. Our basic training is the free and clear cash machine. And uh, the five by five is actually how to be a transaction engineer, how to, uh, how to turn non-deals into deals, deals that you might not want to buy or that they don't, you know, they're, we don't normally consider a deal. So the process sometimes is, is the same here. So let's take a look. This is from module four. There's about 17 modules. And module four is on pre-screening and exits. And you see my screen there, right, Mark? You, you see the uh, mind map? Do you see the mind map, Mark? Yes, I do. Okay, good. Yep. All right. Yep. All right. I sure do. So what are the advantages? I do. I do. Okay, good. <laughs> what are the advantages of being good on the phone? Well, you're going to maximize the value of all the leads that you generate. And you're also, I want you to identify uh, maybe deals that you're throwing in the trash. I also want to identify things that you might be doing that I don't recommend you do. And so we can talk about that a little bit later. It's like, I've, I've always been told to do this uh, on the first call right? Or over the phone. It's like, what are the pros and cons of that? Okay. And so there's no right or wrong. It's like, what's more efficient? What's going to make you more money? That's what I want to know. Okay. So we're going to, I've, you know, I've taught, you know, I bought over 500 houses. I also uh, helped my uh, coaching clients and my JV partners buy houses. So I've talked to thousands and thousands of sellers looking for, you know, uh, deals that we can buy. So I got a lot of experience. Um, so this is designed to kind of transfer that. So when the call comes in, in this document, it ha there's a property information sheet and there's also a call handling script. Okay. So we're going to kind of go through the mind map here, but what you want to have, uh, you know, a property information sheet to gather the information. Okay. And so we can take a look at if we, that if we have time. But the first thing I want to know when the call comes in is how they got my number. That's the first question. I'll, you know, it's like, uh, I, hey, I'm, I'm calling. I, I, uh, I, so I'm, I'm t I want to talk to Richard. And it's, yeah, this is Richard. What can I do? Well, I got your postcard or um, I, told that you, I was told that you buy houses or something. And then so I want to say, okay, how did you get my number? right? And we want to track all of our marketing because that's what we do to get uh, uncommon results is really get in the habit of tracking all of our metrics, okay? So how many lead, how many people did you target with your campaign? And then how many leads did you get? And then out of those leads, how many offers did you make? And then out of those, how many deals did you do, okay? And so if you want to buy a house, if that's your goal, but you, you work it, you reverse engineer it and you figure out how many leads you really need to generate in order to buy a house, you can't control buying the house as easy as you can control the number of leads that you generate, you know, or the number of people that you target. So that's a controllable input. And that's how you do it. You know, you, that's how that's how marketing plans work. Is it's I okay? I need thirty leads, so you put together campaigns to generate thirty leads this month. Okay, and then depending on your investment model, you know, you're going to buy a deal out of that, right? You're going to make a certain number of offers, you're going to get a certain number closed, and you're going to buy a house. Um, and so it does it does it, how you handle the calls can have your investment model can have a difference. So. If you're just looking to uh, buy based on price, so you're trying to find sellers that are motivated, you're trying to find sellers that are going to be flexible on their price and sell it at a discount so you can make some money. And then the question is, okay, are you going to fund it or are you going to flip it, right? So what, that's one model. Another model 
is being being you know creative financing. So you might be doing lease options, owner financing, subject to. If you're a transaction engineer, if you have different exits, then you want as many sellers raising their hand saying, hey, can you buy my house or how does this work? Okay. So with your marketing, you want to invite, make it very inviting and don't, I don't, we don't pre-screen for motivation because if you have flexible exits, then you, you have a lot of different ways you can help a lot of different people. So I just want sellers calling. Okay. Then right. now we're going to talk about, we got a seller calling us. What are you going to say, Mark? Right. Yeah. The motivation piece is uh, sometimes uh, not there. It's elusive. People are always asking, well, where's the motivation? I want motivated sellers. And so, yeah, we just, yeah. just touched no. on the motivation. Yes, we, we want motivation, but a lot of times they have that that's guarded. They don't want to put their cards on the table. They don't want to reveal their motivation. They don't want to act motivated. They're going to call you up and say, yeah, I, how does this work, right? Uh, when do you want to sell? Oh, I can sell anytime, right? They, but then you find out later, once they open up to you, once you build some rapport, <laughs> that they really need to sell within 60 days for some reason, or they have something that's really grinding on them and it's and they, they really want to get out from under that. So, But we buy a lot of houses from unmotivated sellers. <laughs> we buy a lot of houses from unmotivated sellers because we can offer certain benefits such as a, a above market value using the ultimate strategy for buying and selling houses where we get long-term no interest or very low interest owner financing for a majority of our purchase price, you know, and then a small, smaller private money first to fund the deal and put some money in our pocket and fix up the house and get it occupied, maybe put some money aside for, you know, some, you know, un uncertainty in the future or whatever. So, Yes. Are we, what are we looking for when a seller calls? So let's walk you through that. And as far as are they motivated or not, Mark, if they called you, aren't they motivated? If they call off your ad, your sign, your postcard, they have some motivation. Yeah. <laughs> so now the question is, do they have any equity? Because that's what we sort for. That's what we're looking for is if they have equity, then then it's a potential deal. And we want to build that relationship. If they have no equity, then it could be what I call a five by five strategy where we can, uh, someone else might want to figure out how they can make some money on that. We can flip it to them or we can make a little bit of money on it, but we're not going to close on it. We're not going to buy it per se. Okay. Cause it's technically a non-deal. So we're looking for deals. So we're going to show you how quickly we find out if it's a potential deal or not. So first thing we will ask is, how did you find us? You want to go ahead and gather their contact information. If it's, uh, uh, we deal with a lot of absentee owners. So are they living in the house? Is their mailing address the same as the house? Or what's your, you know, mailing address? And give them a reason for giving you the mailing address. You know, offer to send them some information about you, right? Now, if you've already it, sent them a postcard, they're, you're going to have their mailing address, right? Uh well, you've got to, but you want to verify okay. because they're going to call you. You don't know what their mailing address, you know, what property uh, you, you know, the, because they're going to tell you what property they want to sell. Right. You got to gather that. And then you want to verify if their mailing address is different and, and verify that. And then of course, go ahead and grab their phone number. Now you don't have to do this right in the beginning, but it's, it's look for opportunities to gather that contact information uh, before you hang up. Okay, is uh, and, and, and you know, uh, let's see. So you want to track your marketing and your intention when you're talking to a seller throughout the entire call. The very first call is to see if you can build some rapport with them right off the bat. You want to have a, a friendly conversation. You want to look for some commonalities, and sometimes they're a little closed-minded or abrupt or short. And you want to kind of match that a little bit, but you want to see what you can do to get them opened up because you, there, there might be some questions they don't want to answer, but there's information that you need in order for you to put together an offer. So what's the intent? The intent of taking a call 
is to get gather enough information from the seller so you can determine if it's a potential deal or not, and then go off and run your numbers and do your research. Your intention is not to buy the house on the first call, <laughs> okay? Your intention is to find out, is this a lead? Build some relationship, find out whatever, however you can, what their motivation is without even asking, okay? And I'll show you the questions. We have some magic words that will get you the information you need. So having a property information sheet and taking notes and letting the seller talk as much as possible. Ask open-ended questions, okay? And uh, let the seller talk. So what we do is we use the wow formula. So we're gonna dr dr drill deal down on that. Those are the qu main questions. There's only about four or five questions you need to ask before you know if you wanna go any further, okay? Now in the five by five system, we have a fast decision model. We're not gonna go over that. That's kind of to determine, you know, if it's, if, if it's a deal or not, and then if it's a non-deal, what kind of non-deal can we make money on? So that's what that is. Um, you wanna comp information. So the other part of this module is determining your exit. Okay, once you gather the information from the seller, now you need to research the property, run your numbers and figure out what's your exit going to be. That's going to determine what you offer the seller. Okay. So we're not going to get into determining exits. We're going to stick on pre-screening. So you get your comp information, you determine the value, choose your potential exits, make sure you get their contact. Okay. So let's talk about the wow formula, Mark. Okay. W O W. And so when a seller calls, let's see if we can uh, make this a little bigger. Is that, there we go. Okay. So, hey, so you got a house for sale, Mark? When do you, when do you want to sell? Right? So, yeah, anytime. Okay. And then also, it's like, you got a house for sale? Great. I would love to help you out by becoming your buyer. That is a little salesmanship. That's a little mm -hmm. mental picture. That's a little bit of NLP. You want them to picture you buying their house, becoming their buyer. So you talk that way. You know, you know, if I were to buy your house and I was to become your buyer and you were able to get off to your next house and then go into something else, right? So use those type of mind pictures. When, when are you looking to sell? So the main question right up front is when are you looking to sell? I got a house for sale. Okay, when are you looking to sell? And they'll, based on their answer, sometimes they will give you the status of the property. Okay, so uh, I, I want to sell. I have, a tenant, I have a tenant in there and their lease is up in May. And so I'm looking to sell in the spring. All right. So I have a tenant. It's rented, right? See, it's rented. Okay. So if they say that, yeah, once the lease is up or I have a tenant in there, you know, and they might ask you, can you buy it with the tenant in there or whatever? But yeah, the tenant, it's the tenant just moved out or the tenant's lease is up, right? Let's say, okay, great. How long have they been in there? Okay. Um, what, what are you getting for rent? Those are logical questions to ask if they tell you it's been, it's been rented, okay? Or if it's being rented. And if it's being rented, you need to know that information because you can close and take over the tenant and that's a benefit, but you need to know when's the lease up and how much they're paying. Are they good tenants, right? Get them talking about it. And guess what else comes up, Mark, when you're talking about their tenant? They talk about the, the, the negative the challenges. Yeah, the challenges. Yeah, yeah. right. And it's, it's like, oh, really? They did that? Tell me about it, <laughs> you know? Get them to uh, drill down into their pain a little bit, right? Okay, so is it month to month or at least? When is it up? Are they current on their rent? Um, have you liked being a landlord? Or another question I like to ask is, do you have any other rental properties? How long have you been doing this? Okay. All right. So when do they want to sell? And they might say it's vacant. I can sell any time. All right. How, how long has it been vacant? Right. And, and um, did you, you know, I want to kind of know why it's vacant, right? Maybe it needs a bunch of work. They don't have the money to do it. Maybe it just became vacant. You know, maybe they tell you they evicted someone. Um, maybe it's condemned, you know, so, and then it's occupied. You know, if it's occupied, is it occupied 
uh, by a tenant or are they occupying it, right? So when do you want to sell? You know, are you, are you living there? Okay. And so it will, we will reveal a lot of about their big why and, and their, their hot button, we're looking for their hot button. Their hot button, Mark, you explain, what is a hot button? We don't ask main- them what their, we don't ask them what their hot button is. We, we uncover it. What is it? It's their main motivating factor for the reason why they're selling. It's the main motivator. And it's typically a non-financial reason. Yeah. Typically okay. non-financial. And it's a, it's, a, it's a need to know thing. You need to know what this is. So, and we don't ask it, like Richard said, we don't come out and say, um, you know, what's your main motivating factor for selling at this time? But sometimes if, if you know, like I think you'll get into if, if we if it's not revealed, we might end up asking the question, well, it sounds like a really nice house. Why are you looking to sell at this time? Right. Uh, but I usually wait until the end because oftentimes they'll reveal it. They'll say health problems or they'll, or they'll say we're getting older. We're trying to divest our, our, our portfolio or, or whatever it is. Oftentimes they'll just reveal it. So, so again, we're trying to get them to talk. Um, and so it's good. Asking questions is good. It's a good way to get them to talk open-ended questions. Uh, one of the things that you recommended, uh, which uh, the book called Instant Rapport. Um, so that book is a, is a oh, good yeah. one. For, I, I, for I, I mentioned it to you. You went out and got it. and it and Yeah, like 15 and years. now you recommend right? it. I mean, yeah. Right. <laughs> for sure. 15 years ago, right? Uh, yeah, it's like, okay, how do you build rapport? Well, I can teach you how to build rapport, but here's a nice book that will give you a lot of strategies, okay? You know what? I hear people thinking, because it's like an, a, an NLP or neuro-linguistic programming concept strategy is, see, it's a, NLP is a, a trail of techniques to communicate with people and change behavior, and you can use it for persuasion, influence, and sales, there's nothing wrong with it if you have proper intentions. And some people think it's like manipulative. The definition of manipulation is your intent. You know, if you have a good intent, it doesn't matter, right? If you have bad intent, it's really manipulation. So you do want to influence people and you want to get good at communicating with people. So these techniques were created so people would like go into hypnosis and and change behaviors, right? And then these and then it's applied to other situations. So getting someone in, having rapport with a, a, a client in that situation made a big difference. And so now it's just a science, okay? And so you can easily learn how to do it, practice it, but be yourself. You do this all the time. You know, you build rapport. What, what creates rapport? Likeness, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there's similarities, okay? Hey, you, you find out that you both love fish. Right. And you start talking about fishing that builds rapport. Right. You notice any buzzwords that they use, unusual words or phrases, and you start using the same ones. Right. That or if their kids they, they are may, going if, off to college and you've got kids going off to college. Uh, yeah, yeah. Affinity. You're exactly right. Likeness. And empathy. OK. If they tell if they say that the tenants trashed the house and just left. <laughs> And you had to pay them to go away. I said, man, I, I know what you're talking about. I've had to do that myself. And then, you know, get them to talk about it. All right. So, yep. You want to definitely build rapport. If you have any resistance to gathering the information, and this will happen, uh, the information that you need in order to research the property, run your numbers and make offers. Because again, that's the goal. If, if you have any resistance, it's because uh, it's usually because of a lack of rapport. Okay. And so if you start the asking these questions and they are putting up resistance on some of the other questions that we're going to about to go through, then just kind of skip down to, okay, well, how, how, what's the square footage, you know, ask some of the property information questions. And at the, while you're doing that again, try and build that rapport. So you can go back to the questions that they might've uh, resisted on, like how much do they owe? So when you want to sell, now let's see, uh, what, what have you done to sell the property? I like that one. That's usually the second one I ask. Okay. What have you done to sell the property already or to find your buyer? Right. And again, open and 
ended question, and they start uh, giving you a lot of answers that reveal maybe their motivation, okay, and their situation because our whole job is to help them, you know, by buying the house, whatever the situation is. And even if they don't have any motivation and if they don't have any urgency, they just want to sell the house. Well, what I want to do is I want to make it easy for them. I want to make it easy. Buy it as is. Buy it on the date of their choice. That's a benefit. Avoid the cost of commissions, right? Avoid putting it on the market and showing it or disrupting tenants, okay? And give them a great price, okay? I, I want to help them sell this house because if I don't buy it, I ask them, what are you going to do? And they have to like keep it, rent it, or put it on a, you know, for sale by owner or go with an agent. So uh, I want to help them avoid that. Okay. So what have you done to sell the property? If they say that they've had a sign in the yard for a month or two, right? Or they've run some ads, it's on Craigslist or they hired some type of advertising service, I'm gonna ask them, um, I'm gonna say, well, what were you asking? See, I usually don't care what they're asking because I know I could probably do better <laughs> with the free and clear model, the ultimate strategy. But if they have had it on the market, yeah, it's natural. Well, what were you asking? What kind of results did you get? Did you get any offers? Okay, do you think the price is good? I'd ask them, do you think, if, it, if they didn't sell, it's like, do you think the price was good? Because they were asking, say, 190. I would say, do you think the price is good? And the, get their feedback on that. I also ask them, do you think it would appraise for 190? That's another way to ask them if they were like playing the market, right? Um, what if they had a real estate agent? You know, it's an expired listing or it's uh, uh, it was on the market and they took it off, okay? Yeah, so it's, or it's expiring, or it's active. So I don't buy actively listed properties unless it came from an agent. If they have an agent involved, I'm going to ask them, okay, it's, it's listed, it's active. Uh, but you, but um, then I'll ask them, when's it, when's it expire? When is that up? Okay, because I don't want to, I don't want to tell them you know, go, go see if you can cancel your, your contract. But I, I say, I usually don't have buy houses that are listed. You know, if your agent doesn't perform, you know, I can tell you what I can do if your agent doesn't perform. And, but I usually, it's going to be after your ex listing is expired. Did they tell you that you can get out of your agreement anytime? Because that's what agents do sometimes. They tell people well, you can cancel any time. So I ask them, did they tell you that? And if they said, yes, okay. But if they said no, I, again, I don't want to like get between someone's uh, contractual agreement. Uh, they might say that they had it listed and they had a buyer and it fell through. Okay, that, and get them talking about that. Then I want to know the results. What kind of activity did you get? Uh, did you start with that price? If it was listed, what did you list it for? Did you start with that price? How long was it listed? Okay, and then have they done anything to sell the property? They say no. I was, I just got your card and I'm curious, right? Or I just start, or you got me thinking, <laughs> you know, which is great. All right. And then that real reveals a lot. All right. So the other question is how much they owe? So Mark, you're a seller. You got a house for sale. Uh, well, how much do you owe Mark on your house? Uh, so how, how do you want me to answer this? Uh, be, <laughs> I want uh, you to, to be, have the like, natural reaction. No, the natural reaction defensive. is that's not a good approach. You don't approach people. You do it softer. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's better to say, you know, is you'll your, get resistance. Is, your, is that what you're saying? You're, you're going to you, get resistance. Yeah. And what, that's what's happened to people because they don't ask the, I'm tell. I'm going to show you how to um, yeah. soften your questions so you can actually get better results. Okay, yeah. so we want to know if they have equity because so these are again right in the beginning. You know, do you have a house for sale? Okay, when do you want to sell? All right, have you done anything to sell the house? Is, is the house free and clear? Or do you have a mortgage? Right, and we're looking for equity. 
Okay. So is the property free and clear? Or do you have a, or do you owe against it, right? And then if it's free and clear, um, if it's free and clear, pre-screening is done. We want to buy right. this house. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> as long as it's a house, if someone would deed you the house for free, would you want to own it? Well, no, because it's 2,000 miles away and it's gutted, right? So maybe it's a no. But in most cases, if you can create income on that property, then you want to buy it based on the income on the property. And if it's free and clear, you can just offer what the house can afford. And what can a house afford? Well, if I buy it and I sell it in five or 10 years, what can I expect to sell it for? What kind of income can I expect to get on it based on the, the costs of taxes and insurance, vacancies, repairs, homeowners dues, right? From the market rent. So in my, in my free and clear deal structuring software, the ultimate profit generator, we calculate all those numbers. So we know what the cash flow will be on the property. And we, and we, we know... We know what it's, we find out what it's worth now and we kind of figure out, okay, well, what are we going to sell it for? And then we back out our profit, but we add all the benefits like, um, you know, positive cash flow and our back end and the cash we pull out of the deal when we buy it. We add up all that stuff and it hits our target profit. So we, we buy based on what the house can afford. Okay. So if it's free and clear, we can buy any free and clear property. We can make any property cash flow if it's free and clear. All right, even condos, townhomes, mobile homes, even vacant land, okay? So uh, if it's free and cleared, great, okay? But what if they say they have a loan? No, I, 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 it's not free and clear, I got a mortgage, okay? What do you think it would take to pay that off, right? That's in, instead of saying, what, what do you owe, right? What do you think it would take to pay that off? Because again, a mind picture of paying off the mortgage. Now, if there's a mortgage, we might suggest, hey, let me take over the mortgage. I can pay you more money, right? So we're not saying we're going to pay it off. It's like, what would it take to pay it off? We need to know that. And we need to know their loan information so that you can run the, the numbers on the cash flow. And if you're using my software, that's one of your options. You either pay off the loan with private money or from your buyer's money or uh, take over the loan. And we, we, so if we're gonna take over the loan, that's one of our options, then we need to know the loan information. Now, you don't have to get all the loan information on this first call, but you do need to know enough to find out if that's a potential option for you. Because maybe they have a really bad payment. Maybe it's a situation that, you know, it's gonna help you determine your exit. So what would it take to pay it off? And is that, and that's the first mortgage and that's the only mortgage on the property, right? Are there any other liens on the property that need to pay, need to be taken care of when I buy the property, right? And uh, yeah, I have a loan. So uh, what are the payments on that? Just ask them matter of fact, and does that include taxes and insurance? So you wanna find out the PI on their loan. You also like to know how long it's been there and the interest rate and how much they borrowed and then you can you can amortize the loan and figure out, you know, uh, use that as part of your deal structure. Um, are the payments current? I don't always ask that. You might, when you're talking to them, you might, it, it doesn't matter. I can find out later. Don't have to do this on the first call. Is there anything else that needs to be paid off? Well, are the payments current? That would be if, uh, like a non-deal where we might, it's like a, they have very little equity. And if they and if they have if their payments aren't current, then we kind of need to know that, right? We also need to know if it needs some work when there's no there's not much equity. We always need to know if it needs work, but that's even more important. It's like how much how much money is this going to house going to cost? I got to make up the back payments. I got to do work, right? And that where's that money going to come from? Um, if it's free and clear, we can do that on a private loan first. If they have a lot of equity, we, we can go private money second. But if they, have, if they have little equity, we can't borrow against the equity because there is none. Okay. Is there anything else that needs to be paid off? And then, yeah, if they say, Mark, if they say, why do you need to know? I just say, you know, in order to get clear title when we buy against, you know, anything against the property will be need to be taken care of, right? Yeah. yeah. 
okay. So what do you think it would take to pay it off? And sometimes they say, I don't know, or you know, my wife handles that or what? And it's like, okay, but in a ballpark, roughly, what do you think? Right? Because that's all I need is a rough estimate, right? right. What, do you, what, what, what do you have on that, Mark? I'm sorry, Richard, I, I missed your question. What was it? Yeah, what, uh, this whole question, is it free and clear or do you have a mortgage, these different scenarios? Any other input on that? No, um, other than the resistance sometimes that um, sellers give you. I, I, I want to say that that is oftentimes created by you, the investor. <laughs> um, yeah, how you, because how, your, your, your tonality and your yeah. words, exactly, yeah. Because uh, I only get, a non-answer for this question about one out of a hundred times. It really, yeah. it's really pretty rare. I always get, I mean, I shouldn't say always, but 99% of the time I get the answer to this question. And so if you're, if you're getting resistance about the, this question, which is an important question in order to structure our deals, right? We need this information. This is information we need. Uh, so if you're getting resistance, uh, change your approach. Yeah. And it's different if you were to knock on people's doors or to cold call them, right? And say, do you want to sell your house? Well, yeah, maybe I'll sell my house. Uh, okay, well, how much do you want? What's the lowest price you'll take? How much do you owe? You know, it's different if you're, if they're calling you, but yeah, but you have a lot less resistance. So you got to have like ma additional strategies if you're actually using disruptive ones. Um, so yeah, if they're calling off your, your sign, your vehicle sign, your billboard, your bandit signs, your ads, your postcards, your direct mail um, referrals, you know, you, you have a lot less resistance. All right, there was another W. Okay, so when do you wanna sell? Is it free and clear or do you have a mortgage? What have you done to sell the property? And, um, when can I come out and see it? <laughs> There's another W. I don't know what. I guess we not we want to know why, but we really don't ask that. We're trying to uncover it, right? What do they want? Okay. Well, you we used to ask that. Yes, that we used to. Sometimes ask I ask. Sometimes I ask that. Um. If if it's free and clear, I don't even ask. Okay. If the, if it's worth two hundred and they owe one eighty, right? Then I'll ask them, are you looking to sell it for what you owe? I might okay. do that. I might do that on the first call. Yeah. But if you have multiple exits options uh, to get into a deal, if it's worth 200 and, and they owe 180, if you have a couple different ways to make that work, then why don't you do that later? After you've seen the house, after you've built the rapport, after you've met with the seller or, or talked to them a second time. The more often, the more number of uh, touch points you have in this process actually builds more rapport. It fills up people's convincer strategy. That's a psychological thing. And it makes, it's more real. They feel more obligated to do something. So it's actually better to have, plan on having multiple uh, conversations before you make your offer, okay? What, what you don't wanna do is be in make, the, the only reason why you would make an offer on the very first call is you're trying to blow them out of the wall. Okay. You really don't want to buy the house because if you really did, then you would uh, give it a little bit of time. Okay. Yeah. Now, if they don't have a lot of equity, if it's worth 200 and they owe 180, and maybe your only exit on a deal like that is if everything's great, if I fell in love with that property, it was in perfect shape and I didn't even have to make mortgage payments until I, I found my buyer. The question is, would you would you buy it for 180? Well, you got to run the cash flow on that. There's no equity in it, right? Because of yeah. transaction costs, right? Yeah. Um, so if they owe 85 cents to 90 cents on the dollar or more, we try and avoid those because we target free and clear, but we'll get those calls and we do want to buy those houses too. Then, then I might ask them on the phone, if that's my only exit, I might say, are you, well, are you looking to sell for what you owe? And right, that's making an offer. That's not really making an offer, but it, 
but it's it's like you're asking them if, to do something. You know, will you sell it for? You know, will you accept that as a price? Um, that's more of a pre-screening and it's more of trying to weed them out because if that's the only way you can get into it, then it's like, it's a non-deal and you don't have to spend any, any much time on it. Okay. Um, so now we want to go into the property details. And if you get any resistance, just go to the property details, uh, get the address of the property and their mailing address, find out that, you know, the type of property, the year build or how old is it, the square footage, you're gathering information so you can pull comps. You wanna figure out, um, oh, here's another question I ask right up front, uh, what they think it's worth. Okay, I wanna know what they think the property is worth. So the question is, if I send an appraiser out there tomorrow, Mark, uh, what do you think the house might appraise for? Okay, so you're, you, you're trying to find out what they think it's worth. You know, hey, I, well, I was asking 190 with, for sale by owner. Well, do you think it would appraise for that? Well, not really. Or yeah, I think it appraised for 200, right? I want to know what they think it's worth because the difference between what they think it's worth and maybe what they, they're asking shows motivation. Um, but uh, yeah, so I want to know what they think it's worth. Because if they think it's worth 300 and they're asking 300, obviously there's, that's not a motivation. But if they think it's worth 300 and they want 250, that shows some motivation. But you find out it's actually worth 250 and they want 250, right? So, yeah. and sometimes it doesn't matter, right? If they're, it, if, it doesn't if they matter. Think it's, if they think it's worth 300 and they want 300 and they own it free and clear, then that's a deal. Oh. That's well, that's huge. true. That's, that's true. If, if, and that's, but, and we know if it's free and clear or not, right. We've already asked that question. Okay. So it's like, um, if I had it appraised, what do you think it would appraise for? Okay. So instead of asking them how much they want to, their price, I only get that as if they've already done something to sell the house or sell by owner, uh, a realtor, or they'll tell you, well, I bought it for 182, you know, a couple years ago. I'd like to get that out of it. They, they actually tell you without you asking. So that's why you have your property information sheet and you fill out those things as they reveal them. Right, Mark? What, I had a seller last year tell me, last, so I bought, I bought the, her house on May 15th. She said, I bought this house for 27000 in 1990 and I'd like to get at least what I paid for it. <laughs> I said, okay. I'll, I'll be right up. I'll send you an <laughs> offer. And I bought that house for exactly what she paid for it in 1990, 30 years ago. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. Some, what, when we ask them what they think it's worth, sometimes they say, well, the tax assessor says this, right? And it's like, okay, well, do you think that's hot? Uh, you know, do you think that's what it's worth or do you think it's high or low? Because they might know that all the tax assessments are low in their area or they might know all of them are high in their area. Okay. So you're gonna confirm this, uh, but it's, it's useful for pre-screening to know what they think, gather some of this information from them. Um, like again, the size of the lot and the square footage of the home, um, get it from them, right? And then, and then you can verify it. And if they say, I don't know, then you'll just have to look it up, okay? Um, bedrooms and baths, garage. Also, on my property information sheet, I have, okay, here's what the seller told me. Here's what the tax assessor says, right? And then here's, you know, what it actually is, <laughs> right? Um, I'll show you that on the property information sheet. In fact, I can do that right now. Let's see. So a lot of this stuff we're not going to go through but this property information sheet right here. This is uh, right here, the year built, the main square footage, basement, total square footage. This is what they told me. This is what the MLS said. This is what the assessor said. Now, if there's a discrepancy, I can call the seller back and say, you said it was 1600 square feet, but the tax assessor says it's 12. Did you do an addition? Are they wrong, right? So, um, Okay, so 
the wow formula. So what do they think it's worth? All right, property information. Again, okay, now the condition. We, we can't get that off of public record. We have to ask them or go see the house. And for pre-screening, we want to know what they think. So uh, does the house does the house need any work or yeah, is it in perfect? Am I here? Can you can you hear me? Yeah, it's actually me. I think it's my phone. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. I think you're good. So okay, good. Um and you guys, if you come up with any questions, we'll open up the Q and A um, pretty pretty soon, and then we'll go ahead and handle some questions for you. So, uh, the condition we want to ask them: Is it in? Does it need any work, or is it in perfect shape? No, it needs a little work. Okay. Does it? Do you think it needs carpet or paint? Yeah, probably carpet and paint. Does it? How's the roof? Right. So the flooring, the paint, any repairs? Okay. Uh, roof or decks, landscaping, paint, exterior, interior. You, you can ask them, well, it's in pretty good shape. Okay. Well, on a, on a scale of one to 10, you know, if I was to fix this house up real nice and make it a nine or a 10, what do you think it needs to make it a nine or a 10? And that's another way to ask what it needs. Okay. And then you do that for the interior and the exterior. Okay. And then a really good question is, what do you like most about the property? They'll love that question because they get to talk about something they like. What do you think is most attractive to uh, the next owner? The ne you know, um, and then what, yeah. And then that gives you permission to ask, well, what do you like least about the property? And that's important. That's good information right there. Um, and so examples might be as poorest property, it's got a bunch of outbuildings, the, it's got a wonderful views, you know, it's got a spa, but what do you like least? That will help you um, in your uh, screening and your deal structure. Okay, before you see the house, okay. Um, the intention, what is your intention when you get a call? Your intention, the ideal situation is go to the property, meet with the seller and present offers. That's the ideal situation, okay? But with COVID, you might do that over the Zoom. You might do that over the phone. They might be an out of the area owner. So you, you're not gonna do that, right? Um, they can send you pictures. They can send you videos. They can do a Zoom video, you know, giving you a tour of the house. If it was listed or if it was advertised, you can look at their advertisements, okay? And then you can verify everything later. If it's tenant occupied, you may not see the in the side of the house until it's under contract, okay? Um, if it's vacant, if it's vacant, it's like, and, and they don't live there, it's like, well, I can drive by it, but you wanna meet me at the property. And it's like, you know, because I wanna meet with them. I wanna have, I don't even, I don't even have to go to the property. I don't even have to see the property. I bought a lot of houses I've never seen. I want to meet with the seller at the property, in their home, at their work, or at a coffee shop. I want face-to-face -face time with the seller because that builds trust, rapport, and you'll get more deals done. Okay. Now, if you can't do that, then you just do whatever else you can virtually or you know, the, the, the next best thing. You know, just do the best you can. Okay. So the what's the ideal situation? Okay, uh, another potential uh, goal is to set an appointment to either drive by the property. If it's vacant, hey, can I get in it? You know, can you leave me a key or is the door open or whatever? Um, so the next best, best thing is, is to meet with the seller and not be prepared to make offers. Just meet with the seller and talk about the property. Otherwise you do that on a phone appointment. So your goal on the first call is to make sure it's something you want to spend time on and then set the next appointment. That's going to be a phone call or a meeting. Okay. Or you're going to say, yeah, what I'll do is I'll drive by the property. I'll do my research. I'll crunch my numbers and then I'll call you tomorrow or Thursday or whatever, which is setting the next appointment. So you want to get your comp information. 
Um, what do they think it's worth? Okay, that's where I put it here. Uh, how did you determine it? What do you think it's worth? And again, they'll say the tax value, it might've been a, a, a refi appraisal. Uh, they might've had it appraised. If they have an appraisal, so like, how, what, when did you get it appraised? What was the appraisal for? Okay. Um, they might have some comps. They might say, it. that's what my agent told me, right? Um, do they really believe it? So again, I kind of tie them down on that. Um, and then normally, uh, normally only if it's a non-deal, what do you think it's worth? Let's see. I don't know what that means. All right, property information sheet, I'll show you that. I need to update my directory of property research sites because uh, things have changed over the years. But there's a lot of online resources to, you know, uh, you know, if you're a real estate agent or your your better half is a real estate agent or you're thinking about becoming a real estate agent, you don't have to be a real estate agent to be a uh, real estate investor. Okay, uh, there's some pros. There's some pros and cons. I think there. I don't think there's too many cons. Okay. Uh, but it's not required, all right? And it's, I think, personally, Mark, I think it's a dying profession unless people become like boutique agents or specialize or, you know, overcome the challenges of that. Uh, a lot of things, you know, there's a lot of things going on with uh, Zillow offers, you know, uh, offer pad. Uh, all the information, a lot of stuff that people rely on an agent for information they can do on their own. So uh, I would say if you're an agent, I would start buying houses and as you know, add that to what you're doing. And pretty soon you'll find out with the cash you get up front and the cash flow you can generate and the wealth for the future so that you don't have to earn all your income from work, trading your time um, and all the work you do in order to make a commission. You can make five times that, 10 times that with the same amount of work. Uh, so, uh, but I, Mark, we have a lot of, we've had a lot of coaching clients and students that are like husband and wife team, like Tim Mai, his wife, Francine, she is an agent. And Tim, he, he relies on like listing, you know, he'll like fix and flip, right? So he's relying on cash buyers. He's relying on retail buyers sometimes. So there's an agent involved. Well, it's his spouse, right? So they're a team, so it works out. Uh, what do you think about getting a license? It's not for me. It's not for me either. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, primarily, right. and, and you mentioned the cons, I, there's a lot of, lots of advantages. The biggest disadvantage, the only disadvantage that I see is I've got another pseudo government body looking over my shoulder questioning what I'm doing. That's the only negative I see about it is I've yeah. got this board of this board of people who don't really understand what we do uh, with an air an air of scrutiny and, and just an air of doubt about what we well, do. Well if you're representing people as an agent of uh, buyers and sellers, if you're representative, it's a regulated industry. And if you want to do that, understand it's a regulated industry. You accept that. Okay. Um, so yeah, that is why I, I don't need it. Number one, I don't need it. It doesn't anything. I, I don't, I don't rely on agents because when we buy, when we get sellers calling us to find the deals and then we sell on our own without agents to get them occupied, you know, there, you want a real estate agent on your dream team. Okay. Because you are going to buy listed property every once in a while, you will want to list it. Right or you get advice or, you know, that type of thing. So yeah, you, but I don't rely on agents at all. Okay. Now, one advantage is you have access to the MLS, but that's not as big of an advantage as it once used to be. Okay. Um, so where do you get your online information? There's all these property information sites and you can also uh, use the MLS, you can use realtor.com and then county records. Okay. So it's very easy to gather information these days on uh, property. So to determine the value of a property, you're going to gather the information online. Uh, let's see here. I'll move my script. How do you leave it with the seller? Uh, um, 
you know, so like, what do you say? You, you set them up, you say, I'm going to work on this and get back to you. Yeah, let's get into that because right now we're getting into exit planning, which is we don't have time yeah. to do. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So let's talk about that. Uh, how do you leave it? Okay. I always, I always set the next appointment. All right. So you've asked your questions. You filled out your property information sheet. Uh, you've gathered as much information as you can. And, um, and then you, what you're gathering is information so you can research the property and run your numbers so you can make an offer. Okay. So that's what I tell the seller. I say, okay, great. In fact, you might have to, it's like, why do you need to know all this information? It's, it's because what I do is I gather the information from you. Then I do a bunch of research to figure out what I'm going to do with the property when I buy it. Okay. And I usually buy and hold long-term. Okay. But uh, every property is different. And, and then, um, then I can go ahead and crunch my numbers and tell you exactly how much I can pay you for the property. Cause that's what they want. So that's how I like to leave it is I need to do this so I can, so I can determine how much I can pay you. You know, if they, if I know how much they want and I, then, then I, I tell them so I can determine if I can get you the price you're asking for. Okay. Or if I can determine what's the most I can pay you top dollar, because they got the card, they got the advertising, right? So I can, what's the most I can pay you and still make it worth my while, you know, because usually I'm going to make my money in the future, but you know, I got to figure out how much it's going to cost me. And if there's going to be any cash flow and that type. So you don't let's have to get in those. Yeah. And let's talk just a little bit more about the mental game, the inner game of what you're trying to communicate to the seller. So sometimes when I talk to sellers, they're like, you know what? I get 12 cards a month. I get 12 postcards a month. And I liked yours. Uh, I called yours. I, I liked yours the best. Uh, so, and so that's how, sort of sometimes, how, I'll, I shouldn't say sometimes, 50% of the time, that's how conversations start. And so at the end, I want them to believe that I'm going to go work on this and that they don't need to call anyone else, that I've got their, I've got their solution for it. Right. right. Sort of like they're they're I'm confirming that they made the right decision to call me. OK. And how are you doing that again? How are well, you I just say, you know what, I'm going to I appreciate all the op the opportunity to talk today and gather all this information. What I'm going to do now after we get off the phone, I'm going to go work on this. And if I have further questions, is that OK if I if I reach you again and I, I reach out to you again, contact you again? I just, uh, I'm going to work on this and I'll probably be able to come up with an offer the next 24 or 48 hours. But, but if I have questions, can I reach out to you again? Uh, I'm going to get to work on this right away. I'm, I'm excited. And so I, I, I reassure them that they made the right decision. Uh, I, I let them know that I'm going to start to work on them. So sort of a commitment consistency situation. Um, and, and, and then um, let them know that, uh, that what to expect. So I almost like, it's almost like I'm opening a, a, a door to say, this is what you have behind door number three is going to be my offer. And, you know, I'm going to get it to you in the next 24, 48 hours. So I want them to basically be at, at ease with uh, not just working with me and, and the process, but that they don't need to call anyone else. <laughs> I don't want them to call the other 12 the postcards that they received this month. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, no, that's good. But yeah, and that's what I do. I tell them I'm going to go, okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do some research, crunch my numbers. Um, I might tell them if I'm going to drive by the property, I'll tell them that, right? Um, and then I'll be able to, you know, figure out what I'm going to do with the property. And then I'll be able to tell you exactly what I can do. Um, when would you like to get together? So, I want, again, ideal situation. I, I want to see the house. I want them to show it to me because I want to spend time with them, right? And if they can't show me the house, then I want to say, well, you want to get together, have, have coffee? Again, building that relationship gives you a lot more credibility, right? Um, so as and, we're recording this uh, in the year 2021, I'm not sure if you've heard that there's a pandemic going on. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so do you still push for the, uh, do you still I don't push, push at all. Do you, do you think I push? You know, I don't push. <laughs> no. Well, so what I suggest. So, so what I say, I would say, would you like to get together? Okay. So I, what I'm doing is I'm setting up the next appointment. So at the end, I'm going to tell them, how do you leave it? Here's all the work I'm going to do. And when I'm done, I can tell you uh, what I can do. Um, if, if we had the discussion about, we might already had the discussion if I can go see the house or not, right? All right. And it's like, okay, um, I'm going to do this work. So I, I know, so I can tell you what I can do. Would you like to meet or would you like to have a meeting over the phone or on Zoom, right? Okay. So, yeah. So I actually asked them, would you like to get together or just do this, you know, uh, on the phone? So and if they say, and if they give you like uh, just a, even a hint of, uh, you know, hesitation, do you need to, okay, so here's the, here's the direct question. Do you need to see the house before you give an offer? No, no. If they tell me, I, if, I, if I can't see the house, I know, I, uh, then I'll ask them more questions about the condition. Okay, so I'll, I'll dive deep into that, right? Um, but if I know I can see the house, I can ask less questions about the condition because I'm going to go see it. But if I know I can't see the house, I'm going to find, I'm going to quiz them a little bit more. And, and I will tell them, and it's good for you, if we deal with a lot of retiring landlords or absentee owners, and it's good to tell them, look, if you can give me an idea of the condition of the property, because I'll buy it as is. You're always looking for reason, you know, put those benefits out there. I can buy it as is, but I have to, in order for me to tell you what I can pay, I have to have some idea of how much I'm going to spend and invest in the property to make it in great shape. Okay. So you tell me what would make it a nine or a 10 on a scale of nine to 10. You know, what do you think it is now? And what, it, what would take to a nine or a 10? And, and if they tell me the main components, I don't need numbers from them. I have my own right. number. Right. right. Um, what was the question? Yeah. And, and so if, if you, let's just say, uh, so the question was, do Oh, you, do we push? Do I push? I don't know. Do I don't together. care. Actually what, what I care about is that they are comfortable. I don't want to go see the house at all. If they have any, if, if they give me any resistance on that, I don't even want to, if they don't want to meet. I don't want to meet, but if they want to meet, I want to meet. So I said, I can meet with you or I can give you a call. Which way, what, what would you like to do? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's that whole rapport thing, Mark. Mm -hmm. If I'm not concerned about COVID, right? But there's yeah. a lot of people that are concerned. Okay. Right. And so I respect them. And if they're concerned, yeah. I don't want, you know, yeah. so I want to keep that rapport. If something's yeah. important to them, it's important to me. Right. right. Because I'm on their side. I'm looking, yeah, how can I help them? Mirroring them. Well, but I honestly uh, care about them. <laughs> that, that's useful. I know a lot of people that are on the phone with sellers and they're just trying to beat them up on price. And the question is, okay, you're doing that to try and make more money on the deal or, you know, they might be trying to make it a deal. But if they're trying to make more money on the deal for whose benefit, not the seller's benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you focus in on helping the seller and you have your own rules, look, if I buy a house, I got to make this much money, right? It's not going to work. Okay. Right. But I know in order for me to make this much money, I'm going to have to get the seller down. I'm going to have to negotiate lower. Otherwise I can't solve the seller's problem. They'll, they'll be stuck with that. house. So of there's course. nothing wrong with that. But if I'm just uh, giving them, okay, I can probably give you this price. It looks pretty good. And with the intention of going back and beating them up on price, if that's your strategy, doesn't that doesn't no. sound good, does it? It's disingenuous. And people are taught that and people brag about that. So as so that's yeah. So there you go. Spirit of intent is to help them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That, it and it, it this is so systematic. Uh, when we do the deal structuring on these high equity deals using my ultimate profit generator software, we, uh, we decide what, how much money per year do we want to make holding this property? And we, and it, and then 
you know, here's property can afford. We don't have to negotiate. We just give them different options. I can give you more money if you take less money down or you go longer, right? So right. we just give them different options. Either one, it meets our criteria for profit, okay? Uh, so it's, it's all based on what the house can afford, what the market will bear. It's not that we're trying to be the top negotiator. We want to be the top communicator. We want to get them to open up. We want to learn what they need. So the five-step sales process that I teach and that I learned a long time ago, back in like 87, it's, and it's an NLP strategy. It's the five-step sales process. But it's number one, build rapport. Number two, find a need, okay? So when we're doing this pre-screening, we're building rapport, gathering information to find out their need. And then when we find out their needs, it's going, oh, um, well, if I do buy the house, I can do this and I can do this and I can do this. So we're linking our value that we provide the marketplace, that's how we get paid, to what they need. And then, uh, then you close, then you ask for the next appointment or you ask for, you know, you go ahead and make, you ask them to buy, you know, they ask them to commit. So that comes later, not on the first call. On the first call, we're asking them, can we, can we have another meeting? When can we get together, right? Or, or you know, when can we talk? And then the uh, fifth step is follow up, okay? So close, fourth step is close for the action. And then the fifth, step is follow up. And that's a very good model, but it all starts with building rapport and finding a need. Mark, if you're talking to someone and they say, yeah, I want to sell my house. I got your postcard. Um, uh, my house is on the market and I've got, I've got five offers on the table now for more than I'm asking. Right. Why are they calling you? So I ask them, well, why are you calling me? Right. That, does it sound like they have a need? Yeah, no, it doesn't sound like it. So I would find out, yeah, I, now I need to know why are we even talking, okay? Because if I don't, if I'm talking and I don't see they have a need, um, it's like, if I think they would do better, if I think they would do better putting it on the market based on their situation, doing something else, then I will tell them, you might consider these other options, okay? And then I'll tell them the pros and cons that I might think, of, you know, if I bought the house, yeah, it's going to be quick and easy, but you're going to get, you know, it's not going to do this thing that you told me, right? Like, like we're going to talk to a lot of sellers that want all their money. They won't do any seller financing, right? So if actually one out of nine out of 10 sellers you make offers to are probably going to say no, okay? They're not going to take your offer. So I leave it. How do I leave that? I leave it with, okay, what are you going to do if I don't buy the house? Great. Here's some advice. Here's some tips. Here's some suggestions. If you go that route, and what's good is you leave. You always leave people in a good space. Okay, on the phone, in meetings, throughout the process, make them feel happy that they know you, that they they took the risk of calling you because they're sounds too good to be true, right? And they're trying to. Usually, Mark, right? Aren't they trying to cross you off their list? They're looking for a reason to cross you off the list, right? Right. Yep. That's how we are. It's, they're looking for a reason not to move forward. So don't give them any reasons. Um, so have them like to talk to you, right? And want to do business with you. Now, if you don't buy the house, you might buy it later because you left it open and, and you left them in feeling good and you were helpful. Be helpful, be of service. The more value you can give people you do business with and the people you don't do business with, the more you can contribute and help, it just comes back to you. So what happens is you'll get referrals. They might wanna buy one of your houses. They might become a private lender. They might pursue their other option and then call you back, right? And of course yeah. you, you should be following, should you not be following up of with course. them to make sure that their yeah, other course. options are not working? Of course, uh, but underlying that, <clears throat> it's in alignment with the, <clears throat> the flow, the, the, the deal flow, the flow of the universe, the, the flow of, of wealth. It's aligning your values with uh, the, the flow, uh, the abundance, the flow of abundance, I guess. <laughs> um, so so yeah. that's, I think, what, what you're communicating. 
Uh, so I, I just like to add that, just, a little it, bit of it, science a lot. Yeah, it just works that way. We know it works yeah. that way. I, we don't even have to convince people it works that way. We know it works that way. The question is, are you in the habit of focusing on creating that abundance, creating that value, okay? Creating those positive feelings. Because I've people have been taught hey, you can make money in real estate and do this, and but they're not doing what we're talking about. They're 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 sabotaging the the process because it's not about giving and providing value. Right. Because what people do is they'll give you equity or great terms in exchange for what you're doing for them. Now, so this is a big right. challenge in hot market. They don't give away equity. They trade back. They, they trade for value. That's right. Yeah, I and, agree. I and, agree. And, and that's, that's the right. challenge in these uh, hotter markets is uh, investors are, are, trying, are having a hard time finding sellers that need any help, right? Now, a lot of sellers would sell you their house, even though they can sell it to someone else, but they'll sell it to you because of the ultimate strategy, because you can actually, for some people, they'll want the income or they'll want the higher price, or they'll just want, they don't want the hassle of putting it on the market. There's all these reasons. Okay. Um, so you're, you know, you're always going to be helping. So do we have, we'll open up for questions. Anything, what else to wrap this up on pre-screening calls come in. We ask these questions, fill out the property information sheet. There is a call script in the document that I sent you guys. If you're on Repodio and you were invited to this, uh, check out that call. Script. I think me and Mark went over it during the boot camp or something. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah. So yep. uh, what else do we need to do to wrap up what we covered tonight? I think the, the main takeaways are get the seller to talk. Yeah, it should be like 90, 10, 90% 90 the seller, 10% you. Ask questions. Um, the person that asks questions has control of the conversation. Wouldn't you agree, Richard? Yeah, you know what? That's a good point. Number one, don't be in a hurry, okay? Uh, unless, you, unless you know what's the non-deal and you want to get off the phone, right? But don't be in a hurry and don't argue with the seller. Don't dis don't I never disagree with a no. prospect. No. You, you don't there it doesn't do you any good. It's like, and again, I see this. People are trying like to negotiate and win and persuade and change people's minds and convince people. No, just get you're like you said, ask questions and listen. That's right. Yep. Yeah, and then be in a, a spirit of uh, helping them, be in the spirit of service. I think that's all those, that's a good wrap up. Okay, good, very good. What kind of question, if anybody's got questions, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask. You can also, do we have any from the chat? Uh, I've been monitoring the chat and uh, there, are, there have not been any questions that I have not, I've been able to just uh, okay. keep up with it, keep up with any questions along the way. Okay, so we'll take any final questions. If there aren't any, then we'll kind of, you know, wrap things up. Um, yeah, if you anything, have a, any housekeeping things that we need to talk I about? I do have housekeeping things. Yes, I do. Okay, yeah, no questions at this time. Okay, good. All right, so, well, I, we did such a great job. <laughs> All right, so I invite people, if you're not, if you don't have a free account with Rapodia, you know, go over to Repodia, okay? This is my bio, if you click on bio. You go over here and go to categories. Um, and then what you can do is if you don't have an account, just go down here to free and just pick one of these free. Here's, here's the ultimate training webinar that we did like, oh, this was like uh, eight years ago on marketing. All right. Here's a million dollar postcards that was just recent, okay? It's free, uh, raising millions in private money. Actually, this is how to raise private money to fund your deals. I uh, got some Zoom backgrounds. We got an open Q&A call. This is really good. The free and clear cash accelerator. Um, that was a, what was a three day? Yeah, five day event that we did over four days uh, on the free and clear model. Um, but, so this good stuff, some of this stuff will disappear. So check it out. If you don't have an account, just grab anything. You'll create an account. 
then you will be notified of other stuff I give away for free. Um, also, we have, uh, if, we, if you go to repodia.com, TUS profits, and that would be under the categories of um, the ultimate strategy or home study systems, okay? So go to home study systems and we have, this is our current pro, this is our current recommended package uh, of uh, it's the free and clear cash machine, which is the basic training. It's the ultimate profit generator software, um, and it's also two months of a support in March and April. Okay, and then there's some additional programs in that. So just check that out, and it's a four thousand dollar package of um, uh, training and support. And you can get that tonight, you know, right now. I don't know. There's no deadline on it right now, but it, it, it's going to change. Right now, you can get it $290, $290 a, a month for, what, five months. Or you can just pay in full, okay? So it's real easy uh, to, to get all of the stuff that I recommend you have to get started. Now, if you want to get this package and you already own the Free and Clear Cash Machine course, or you already own Cash Now Secrets, or you already own the UPG uh, three point, you know, the upgraded version of it, um, then just give me a call, get a hold of me. You can go to paulroop.com and I'll go ahead and modify the package and we can replace. We got a lot of great tools. We got a lot of great home study courses that we can replace whatever you um, already have with. Uh, let's take a look real quick and I'll talk about some events. But these home study courses, we have more, but these are the best. So the, the five by five system, um, I probably should go ahead and do a deal on that. Uh, raising millions in private money, Cash Now Secrets is part of the package I just showed you. Strategic marketing secrets for real estate entrepreneurs. I, I, we'll have to kind of drill down on that soon. Free and clear cash machine is your basic training with your tools, your marketing, your forms, your contracts, the scripts, everything, plus the basic training and the deal structuring software, which is on its own, usually 797. But now if we, if you bought this for 997, I would, I would give you that because this, this has the free and clear offer generator software and this other $800 software is, uh, has much more bells and whistles. It's actually makes you more money it keeps you more safe and all of that. So, um, and then million dollar mindstorming. We, we gave this to everybody at the boot camp, didn't we, Mark? At the boot camp, did we give this? No, who did we give this to? Yeah, you did. I you did. did. Oh, this is amazing. Idea. I think huh? I can't remember. It's amazing that you gave it away and that's still available. Like it's uh, valuable. Uh, this is an amazing, this is uh, me and Willie Hooks uh, on the secret of creating, oh, discover the secrets and science behind creating your ideal financial future. It's just amazing. You got 100% good feedback on that, I think. Um, all right, richardroop.com, make, make sure you go in and get on my newsletter, okay? Um, and million dollar coaching, in the email I sent out today, there's a link to this document. It wasn't working on my phone, Mark. It was saying that, well, I just sent out the email. So maybe there was a lot of people, you know, downloading it, but it has this coaching document. We are uh, starting a new batch of coaching clients for March. The deadline is Monday. So tomorrow I will go ahead and release, uh, I'll email out an offer to, if you want to talk to me about coaching or if you want to sign up for coaching. Or if you want to get that that package of training and support, because you know maybe you're not ready for coaching if you don't have any if you're brand new and you don't have my training. Okay, so we can talk about it if you want. Callroop.com. But this document explains um, what what coaching is to us and what and 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 how how the the type of support you get. We we drill down on it, and it's basically unlimited support. So. All right. And it's, it's probably the best coaching program on the planet. You know, I was on Clubhouse, Mark, and they were, someone actually did a room. Is coaching a scam? 
right? Well, actually, some of what people sell for coaching is a scam. Yeah. yeah. Some of it is. <laughs> you know, all right. All right. Any other, um, that, so that's my house cleaning. Oh yeah. That's my house cleaning stuff. Uh, great. Cool. Uh, I don't have any other questions. Um, not at all. I'm pretty excited about the year ahead though. Starting off really good. Starting off really, really good for me. So I'm excited about the year and excited about some of the clients are making good progress. Um, it's good content tonight. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think this would be real helpful, especially to our, our new students and some of our newer co coaching clients that are getting started. Uh, we've, we've helped people, you know, generate their leads using the Magic Bullet Postcard, um, you know, the leads, you know, and start their private money program. And now we're getting like, okay, what do I do on the phone or how can I get better on the phone? So we kind of covered that tonight, yeah. right? And the next thing is deal structuring, you know, planning your exit and deal structuring. So th we have those modules in the, in the training, but next month, oh, did we say what something we were going to do next month already, or we have not let the cat out of the bag? I, think we, I don't think we've discussed that yet. It's been a secret up until now. <laughs> it was a secret of what we were going to do tonight until today. I just tell them, hey, we're doing it Thursday night. Uh, it's going to be great. And hopefully yeah. it was great. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Oh, I, I see Will has his hand raised. Did you see that? No, I didn't see that. All right. I'll ask him to unmute. Or maybe he didn't mean to do that. His hand is. Oh, yeah. no, maybe that's my hand. Oh, that's maybe your hand. <laughs> okay. All right. Good night, everybody. Uh, Follow me on social media, Facebook, Clubhouse, uh, LinkedIn, YouTube. I got a great YouTube channel. Uh, let us know uh, how we can support you in achieving your, your goals. Um, just get a hold of us and talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, Mark.